Hi everyone, I'm Dan Lloyd and I race in the British Touring Car Championship and today I'm going to give you my top five tips to help you improve your pace and your technique on track days. So in this video today, out of the top five tips, we're going to talk about how to hold the wheel correctly, we're going to talk about racing lines, talking about braking references, braking technique and awareness around the circuit. Before I start the video, if you do enjoy the video, please click the like, subscribe button and comment if you want me to do anything more like this. The purpose of this video is I'm 30 years old now. I started instructing when I was 17 years old. I mean, instructing for 13 years and I've been by the side of every type of driver you can imagine. Very, very experienced, complete novices. And over the years, you can imagine I spot very similar mistakes that people use. These five tips are fairly basic tips if you're an expert driver or you've had a lot of tuition before I'm sure you've heard this before but hopefully some of these can help you um, I've got in car with people who have been in uh, driving for a year and still making these very simple mistakes so here we go so tip number one the most basic of all the tips so bear with me here but the most simple tip I can give hold the wheel at quarter to three it's amazing how many people who turn a corner wherever they're going and they start going like this with a wheel and the problem is with that you've got to then find the paddles or if it's a sequential you've got to move from here but the main reason you, you hold the wheel at quarter to three or a little bit of a 10 to two angle is if you ever get any oversteer or understeer you always know which way the wheels are pointing. If the wheel is like this, you know the wheels are facing this direction. If you're holding the wheel like this, halfway through the corner, you're just guessing. And that's when you have moments. So first rule, the very, very basics. Hold it at quarter to three when you turn in the corner. If you're taking the racing line in the correct way, you should not have to move your hands from this position at all. So going forward on the racing line, so we're at turn one, we're at Redgate at Donington. This is a perfect example of doing a bit of homework about the racing line. Going down into the first corner, what an amateur, what a rookie would see is a 90 degree right hand corner. Um, if you do some research, if you look at a track map, you'll actually see the corner's probably about 120, 130 degrees. So instead of it being a standard right hand corner, doing your research, I know into this corner, I need to turn in a little bit later, a little bit softer, and apex in that little bit later, because it really tightens up on the exit there. Something very, very simple like that, if you don't do your research, you go in too tight, you carry too much speed, run out of room on the exit, and that's where accidents can happen. So do your research on the racing lines. So my third tip, number three, is braking references. Now, this could be a personal preference but it's what most professional drivers do and it's a great way of trying to increase and improve your lap time around the circuit if you're going lap after lap not looking where at what point you're braking then realistically you're not going to be very consistent having a braking reference at the end of long straights gives you the consistency of where you're braking how hard you're braking and what sort of line and speed you're taking into a corner you don't want to have braking references at every corner the slower speed corners second gear third gear the slower speed stuff you don't want to be using it you want to go off feel um, and judgment and sight of the eye um, but for the fastest corners at the end of the straight when you're carrying fifth sixth gear and you're braking from sixth down to second then you do want braking references so again talking about braking references and this leads on to your braking technique which i'll move on to next as well the idea is if you're starting on a day if you're a novice if you've never been around donington before you have to start somewhere but pick a point and stick to it this leads into the braking technique but if you're if I'm coaching someone who's an amateur driver, I would say, right, let's pick point A, brake as hard as you can initially before the corner. So we're going into the last uh, chicane at Donington here. If we pick this point as our first braking reference and we hit the brake nice and hard and we've stopped the car with 50 meters to go before the last corner, you know next lap you can move this braking point forwards. 
I'd move it forwards five metres, five metres, taking your time until you get to a point where, okay, I'm struggling to stop it now and it's affecting my corner speed and corner exit. But to start with, pick a point. Once you've got that point, okay, right, I'm comfortable with this now. I can stop the car way before I can push it on a little bit. Nine times out of ten, drivers don't have any reference and they just pick a point, guess, and again, that's where the inconsistency comes from. Pick a reference point, try stick to it. Once you're comfortable, keep moving it forward until you feel like you're at, at, your, um, at your level. So tip number four, we're gonna talk about braking techniques. Okay, this kind of links, well, it all links in together, of course, but this links into your braking reference and your racing line. Um, so your ideal braking technique it should be a graph that really spikes high initially and then bleeds off into the corner. It's called trail braking. A couple of reasons for this. Number one, if you can imagine the weight of the car, this is the front of the car, this is the rear of the car, really technical stuff here. But um, as you hit the brake, if you hit the brake at 100%, the weight transfers to the front. So the front goes really heavy, the rear goes really light. As you bleed off the brake, the weight shifts back to a neutral position. Obviously, when you get on the power, actually the weight shifts back and goes to the rear. This is a similar braking technique, whether you're in front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. This is a generalized technique. Obviously, you can get into more detail depending on whether you're in a Porsche or, or a touring car. Um, but this is a general technique. So the idea is when you hit the brake really hard initially, the car is in a straight line. So you get most of the braking force done straight away. So if you can imagine going into Redgate, first corner at Donington, the car's like this, you hit it really hard, and then as you're going into the corner, you're bleeding off, you're bleeding off, you're bleeding off. And at this point, just before you turn into the corner, you might have about 15, 20% brake pressure still on. That little bit of weight that's still over the front of the car makes a huge difference to the front grip of the car. Um, if you imagine doing it the opposite way, if you're going into, into the corner at the end of the straight and you brake soft and it's like this, not much weight over the front, because you've broken soft, just before you go into the corner you realise I'm not going slow enough here, I need to kill a lot of speed, therefore you end up hitting the brake really hard at the last minute. So all the weight goes to the front, the rear goes light and then at that point you end up turning in. Because you're turning in here, when you've got no weight over the rear, that's, that's when you get a spin, that's when you lose control. So really important to get it right, that first initial hit, again going back to your brake reference, pick your brake reference, hit it really hard, if you get it stopped, that's fine, but as you're going in, bleed off, bleed off, bleed off, be patient, enter the lock, you've got the grip over the front, and then you'll enter the corner nicely. So last tip, tip number five, this is a really easy tip, mostly for beginners. It might be, it might sound very obvious, but a lot of people don't get it. When you're on a track day and you're a newbie or you're picking up some speed, just have awareness around you. Um, having that awareness and seeing cars coming, moving over early, making it obvious, helps you improve as a driver a lot more. It's the worst thing on a track day when you catch someone, they don't look in the mirror, you end up getting five, six cars in a, in, a, in a train, people get frustrated, you end up having accidents, but what it also does, it, it hinders um, your opportunity to improve. If you've got a car coming up behind you and you're aware of that car, you move over early, they pass you, you slot in nicely behind them, you will go with that car. You'll end up watching what they do because you'll be in more control and you'll go along with that car. Really obvious one, very bog standard stuff, but be aware of your surroundings and learn off other people on these track days. So there we go, they are my top five tips to try and help you on your track day. I hope you found them useful. Some are very, very simple, some are a little bit more in detail. It's the first video I've done like this. If you enjoyed it at all, please like, subscribe to my videos. And if you enjoyed it or want me to talk about another specific subject or techniques on track days, maybe talk about rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, the differences. Uh, left foot braking, right foot braking, whatever. If you've got something you find interesting, please let me know. Uh, let me know your feedback. I would like to do more videos like these. And yeah, hopefully see you soon.